Relays, we're not talking about relay races, we're talking about electromechanical switches. Actually, relay and relays, uh, they sort of uh, derive the same definition from the same situation, and that is relaying something. In a relay race, you're relaying a baton. In relays, you're relaying electricity. Electric relays are surprisingly old. Uh, they have been around since the early 1800s. All of the early ones were made for a very similar purpose, and that was for relaying information long distances. Over time, these signals fade and will require boosting and amplifying again to get, you know, keep on going and keep on going, and that's where a relay comes in. So this is a relay, but this is also a relay. It's a, it's a pretty mahusive relay at that. I'm pretty sure this relay is from some sort of rail thing, some sort of railway communication or junction or something like that. But regardless, it's just a big relay and this relay is perfect for showing you what the heck a relay is, how many times do I need to say relay. So initially the relays were made to uh, basically amplify signals. They took a relatively small signal and relayed it into a much larger signal using these things over here. Relays do that by using electromagnetic charge that basically a tracks a bit of a switch to make the switch magically do its switchy thing. Have a watch. See that? So this is the switching mechanism of the relay. It causes the actual switch to break and make. If you see that, it's doing its breaky makey thing. So there's three different parts of the switch. There's the switch part that is here that is currently connected together. You'll see this part and this part are actually touching each other. That means the signal going up the center is gonna come out of this side. And this is what is called the normally closed side of the switch. That's because normally when there's no electricity being run through anything, well, this part of the switch is actually conducting. So you can send something into here and it will come out of this side. And then there's the other bit here, and this is called the normally open contact. That's because it's normally open until you send electric charge through the electromagnet, and then it will, yeah, it will close and it will make the contact between these two contacts. So you've got two poles to the switch. You've got the normally open and the normally closed, and these come in handy in various different arrays. This specific relay right here actually has four switches in it. There, you can see there's one here, one here, one here, and one here, and these are all isolated from each other so they can be wired in to different things. Let's fire it up again. Oh yeah. As time went on, the use and applications of relays also evolved and stuff as people found that they had a plethora of uses. In fact, there was a time starting in the 1930s and stuff where relays actually replaced the functioning parts in mechanical computers. So you've got relay computers and this was just before the vacuum based computers came in, which were a lot quicker than the clickety clickety traps. And there are actually quite a lot of modern DIY relay computers about, including relay clocks, relay counters, this, that, and the other. So if you're interested in them, definitely go and search up really a computer and just hear all the clicky clicky magic. Oh yeah. Electromechanical relays come in all shapes and sizes and they are around still everywhere. Even my modern audio interface has a relay inside it. If you listen to this about five seconds after it boots up, you'll hear a relay clipping on or off. This is to switch some sort of isolated signal in there. Not 100% sure what it's from, but maybe it's because there's a weird noise that happens when it starts and it just kind of bypasses that. Who knows? But regardless, you do find them in modern machines. And here's a few examples of some relays. You've got a starter solenoid from a traditional engine starter of a car. This is electromagnetic and yeah, it's a relay. Oh, just look at that, that's so chunky. It's a massive solenoid that does a couple of jobs when starting a car, including pushing some of the mechanism into the engine to get it going, but it also makes electronic contact. As you can see, the bulb turns on when you flick it. This is a reed relay, you find them in burglar alarms, this, that and the other, and they are quite silent. You don't hardly hear them or you can hardly see them. You can also get these in standard integrated circuit packages as well. Ooh, look at that doing its thing. So the polarized relay has two choices. You can either send it this way, you could send it off, or you could send it that way. So we send it this way, but you can also flip the polarity and flip it all the way over to this side. And if you turn it off, it goes back to the center again. So we flick that again. It's on, you flick it off, it goes to this side. Ooh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. A post office relay has a lot of switches inside the same relay. As you can see, there's a lot moving in there when it's doing its thing. Thermal relays use a heating filament to actually warp it into shape, so it actually adds a time delay. This one has a 20 second time delay, so when you flick it on, it starts heating up, and as it heats up, it gets ready to do its uh, switchy thing. 
Hey, there we go, it's turned on. I've also done a video on the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel about an Edison thermal switch, so um, check that one out there. There's loads of other types of relays as well, including latching relays, so you can make a one massive, massive hard drive if you really want, and I'm, I'm quite tempted, I've got to be honest. So the thing that I like about relays is, you know, for however simple they are, in essence, you can actually make them do quite complicated things. If you gang a load of these things together, you can make them do, well, near enough, whatever you want, as long as speed is isn't uh, something you're after. If you look at a relay as something that could turn something on and off, or one and zero, then basically you've got the building block and fundamentals of, uh, you know, digital electronics. So let's start from the top, shall we? We've got a relay here. It's receiving five volts. This is a five volt relay. You can see it's a little bit of a funky one. And it's got a switch here. It breaks the contact between the five volts, the relay coil, and going to ground. So when I flick this, it'll do its relay thing. And there's a couple of LEDs connected to the actual switch to show you when the switch is changing its poles. This one has a normally open and normally closed light in that really big one. But if you look really closely, you'll see the connection actually being made. So this relay also has two separate switches so we can wire in two isolated signal paths into either side of this thing as well. Ooh. So what happens if we send ground through the switch of the relay and then wire it into the actual relay itself? But then um, also connect the switch as well. So we'll make the switch do its initial contact, but it's also actually connecting to ground on the actual relay itself. So without this, we've got it normal. And if we put it to itself, if I flick this, it actually stays on. If I unconnect this again, it'll go back to normal. So when you push the switch, it completes the circuit, so it makes the coil flick down, and then this makes the switch actually push forwards. But because the ground is also connected there and there, it makes it latch on and it stays on because it's making a complete connection when it's uh, created. So we flick it over, it stays there. But if I make this connection to the normally closed side of the switch, you'll hear that, it actually starts buzzing. That's because the mechanics in here are sort of making a feedback loop. I'm sending this to ground because it's made the connection with the normally closed, but the second you put this connection together, it actually cuts itself off, it turns itself off. And then you end up getting this sound right there. Obviously this is very quick and the delay is based on the actual mechanics inside the relay. But now if I add a really big capacitor into this circuit, you can actually slow this down. As you can see here, it's actually making a slower click. And that's because the capacitor is acting like a bit of a battery in here and it's staying on for longer and, you know, keeping it at a constant rate. The problem with this is you see it's very unsymmetrical. And that's when we add two relays to the circuit. You get a much more symmetrical clock. And if we double the capacitance here, we'll actually get it twice as slow. So we'll double the capacitance. And now we made it twice as slow and it sounds like your car. Let's go back to the first circuit. It may not have been immediately obvious with this latching circuit, but basically here is pretty much uh, one bit of memory because this is zero. Imagine this is one. It's now one. And if we want to bring it back to zero, we break this connection here and it's zero again. And if we add another relay here to actually break the ground from this, so we'll uh, put this one over to the switch here to the normally closed and then we'll wire this one into here. So the ground actually goes through this relay and into here. So now we have a set and we can reset that. So now with two relays, you've basically got this. And you can keep on adding relays like this and adding complexity. For instance, if you only ever wanted this decision to be made on a clock pulse, well, all you do is you add another relay that isolates it when the clock isn't being sent in. And then you'll make it a synchronous latch. Relays have interested me uh, no end ever since I ever really got into electronics. But I just didn't really, it just didn't really make sense, I've got to be honest. And then recently I was like, right, I'm going to make something with relays. I I've always wanted to make something like a relay computer or a relay counter, but I'm struggling to find the applications and how much use they are to me for making a relay computer. Um, you know, I, I just don't know what I'd use it for. I'd probably be building it purely for the sheer joy of it. I thought, wait a second, why don't we make a special type of relay computer? A relay computer that could be used in a musical application. And yeah, that's it, making a relay sequencer. Uh, I want to, by the end of this all, make quite an elaborate sort of performance sequencer. Because if you basically take these fundamentals and just keep on building them, you can build all manner of parts of sequences. You can make an analog to digital converter, for instance. You can make the sequence. You can even make memory for presets with these fundamentals. 
So for this past few days, I've been messing around with the fundamentals of making a, you know, a relay based step sequencer. And this is currently where I'm at. And man, it looks, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> so a quick introduction into step sequence, if you don't already know, are basically the most basic type of sequencer inside a synthesizer. In fact, one of the first electronic projects of mine was building a 4017 baby eight step sequencer, which is basically a do 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 And I'm sure if you're into DIY synthesis, you've built something very similar. There's also a project that I made a couple of years ago called the Keyboard Sequencer, which is basically an Arduino version of the Baby 8 Step Sequencer with a few more bits of functionality. But the thing is, like building anything with relays, you've got to go down to the fundamentals of what is actually happening. And if you're interested in getting to the fundamentals of this, uh, I did a video on the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel about step sequencers a couple of weeks ago, and I basically spoke about things called flip-flops. Uh, these are the things that basically sit on your breadboard, they don't sit on your feet. And these flip-flops are also something that I spoke about in the SWTPC video a couple of weeks ago and these are pretty much the fundamentals of step sequences. They're like a posh version of the set and reset kind of latch thing and for building this sequencer I required a D-type flip-flop. That means there's an input that isn't set and reset but the set and reset are in the same input meaning if the voltage going into it is high it sets it and if the voltage going into it is low it resets it and if you're interested in seeing how D-type flip-flops work in sequence we'll go and check out the other video that I mentioned earlier uh, basically where I build uh, a sequencer out of flip-flops. Each of these right here represent a step in the sequence. I tried to figure out the D-type flip-flop by myself but I wasn't having much luck it was going all over the place but I found a really good video by Simon Winders uh, basically describing how a D-type flip-flop works with relays and this is basically the Simon Winders D-type flip-flop. The link for that video is also below so if you're interested in the functioning of the D-type flip-flop then I'd thoroughly recommend you looking further into that. But basically how these three relays work is these two are acting like these two relays right here and then this one is saving the state of what is being put in it. But basically how the D-type flip-flop works is you send a signal in on the D input which is this which uh, chooses whether it's going to set or reset and then you send a clock impulse into there and if you look here I'll be able to write a bit onto this step. And if I take my finger off D and press the clock again because there's no signal going into it this will turn off. So I send the input high, it listens to it when I flick the clock, and it turns on. If I turn it off, it turns off. But the thing is, if you cascade flip-flops down, you can actually send that signal along. So for instance, I send this high and I put it into the clock. You see it's turned on. And now on the next clock hit, because this D-type flip-flop is actually listening to what the output of this is saying. So now this is high. So this is like my finger pushing down on this switch. It actually listens to that, but this one's going zero. So this one turns off and this one turns on. And I'll push the clock again and it cascades down to this one and it cascades down to this one and I don't need to push my finger down anymore because the bit is actually in it and now it'll keep on going around and this is the fundamentals of the relay step sequencer I've also added a reset button over here so now I can reset it this one right here amplifies the clock signal I've currently got a beat step pro coming into this acting as the clock so if I send the clock in but there was a fundamental issue with writing in the bits doing this the problem is if I am too slow with pushing the button I can accidentally send two in, and I didn't want to send two in, I only want to send in one. And if you don't flick it on the clock pulse, you don't actually get it. So you need to make another circuit, and that's the circuit over here, which actually writes in a bit into the sequence, but only ever writes one bit. So if I flick this, so now there is a bit of information in this relay circuit over here, waiting to be sent into the sequence. So I'm going to push the sequence, and now it's sent that one in. And if I push this button any time, I can add an extra step but I'll only ever be able to add one step. So if I push my finger down, it's only added one step in there. I've been talking a lot about this on Builders Vlogs this past week over on my Patreon and there's a couple of questions that came up and that was, how quick can you make it go? Well, surprisingly quickly actually, we'll, we'll give it a go right, right now. So it's clicking right now. Oh, it sounds so good. Let's slowly speed it up. I mean, I've actually maxed out the... Uh... Ah, there we go, it topped out. It topped out at about 410 BPM. So you can actually make this go remarkably quickly, even though it is just mechanical relays. The other question that came up is this is really pushing the actual functionality of relays. Relays aren't supposed to be constantly turned on and turned off. They, they can wear out. But I've done a fair few tests on this and they've proved to be quite good. For instance, I left it running like this. 
for, I left it running like this for the best part of 10 hours and this is still my test bed and it's still actually amazingly working. So yes, the relays may break at some point, but they're not broken yet. <laughs> This drawing right here is pretty confusing, I've got to be honest, but the only way to understand it is to just stare at it for quite a while until it starts making sense. These red boxes right here represent different relays. This square right here is the electromagnetic coil. That's the thing that if you send signal in, it actually makes these switches do their thing. Inside each of the relays, there are also two switches. This side is the normally closed side, and this side is the normally open side. This may seem a little bit backwards if you know about relays to other relays. However, I'm using Omron relays, where actually the normally closed is this side and the normally open is this side. Sometimes they're around the other way in relays. So this first drawing is looking at Simon Winder's D-type flip-flop. I thoroughly recommend you checking out his video because I don't think I'm gonna be able to eloquently put it like he put it. So I've bought this back again to show you uh, a, a bit that I'd sort of forgot about. There's quite a funky uh, implementation in stuff like relay clocks and relay computers and stuff like that. So the thing is if you wire it up slightly differently and make the most of this mechanical delay, and this is shown by this LED right here. You can see I've made this LED basically do a clock pulse and this is what's inside uh, relay debouncing circuits as well. But this is working on the fact that it takes a little bit of time from the normally closed and the center of the switch to actually deactivate from each other. So you end up getting this tiny little pulse and you can make the most of this tiny little pulse to actually make these flip flops right here. So this relay, for instance, it receives a clock and it goes into the coil. And when the clock hits, this actually breaks the contact onto the next clock. So this clock only receives ground for a tiny little bit of time before the actual uh, clock flicks over and it actually disengages this. The thing is, if you don't do this, it'll actually act like an oscillator and it'll go bzzz. You don't want that, you wanna be able to save it. And this is the memory relay right here. And this latches on and off, depending whether you wanna save a bit in or you don't wanna save a bit in. This extra relay actually acts as something that amplifies the amount of switch contacts. So it doesn't actually do much more than give you more kind of functionality to this basic circuit. So depending how many steps you want your relay sequencer to have, you build this circuit that many times. Basically what you do is this Q is the carry out and this D is the input. This reads it from the last step and the Q writes it to the next step. This is another part to the step sequencer that is actually similar to the circuit that I made but with digital logic circuits uh, over on the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel sequencer video, which is touching on the 4013 chip doing this, but with chips instead of relays. This circuit means that I can write a single bit into the step when it starts, so it doesn't ever play more than one. And this actually makes the most of other kind of fundamentals of relays. For instance, you can use the relay's fundamental delay within its function as a actual delay to the circuit. So for instance, you can make this listen to itself for a lot longer. So it's got a delay relay, it's got a pulse relay, so it sends a pulse, it delays that pulse, and it goes into this setting relay, which saves the state and then it sends this out into the sequence. So it sends it into a step, this step goes high, but then when this step goes high, it actually resets this whole circuit. On top of these two circuits, we've got the clock buffer circuit, where it has a transistor. I know, transistor, geez. And this basically just means that we can plug any clock input into this and it will read it and it will keep us happy forevermore. And there's also a reset relay and all this does is basically cut the ground from the latching memory relays inside the flip-flops and it basically just wipes the whole sequence sequence clean. So taking all of this into account, I've built these little modules in front of us. These are basically just the parts that are required to build the step sequencer. I built it in a modular way so I can potentially build on the idea later on, but I sort of wanted to get a proof of concept down of the sequencer actually functioning because you've seen it doing it all its lighty and ticky things, but you haven't seen it actually do its sequencery things. And that's when these uh, knobs come in handy. This box is what I'm going to build the proof of concept into. It's going to be a eight step sequencer. Sequencer. This is primarily built to be sort of an interactive display at the museum so you can actually press play and it will do a sequence loop and stuff. And yeah, and if this is as awesome as I think it's going to be, I'm going to use this as sort of a bedrock to building a way more complicated, way more funky, sort of pretty much an Arturia Beatstep Pro, but out of, out of relays. <laughs> 
purely from the point that relays actually give you that visceral feeling that there's actually something going on and it makes it seem a little bit more tangible and also at the same time it sort of makes it seem a little bit more magic in a way because you're aware of everything that's happening in the circuit because you're literally hearing and seeing all the clicks it's just a, I, I just find them tremendously fascinating basically so in this eight step sequence so there's basically eight of these modules which are for each step i built all the elements onto separate boards with screw terminals so i can adjust it uh, you know if i change my ideas and plans and stuff like here's the clock module there's the reset module and this is a slightly more involved step writing module you can see some of the circuit is on the top and some of the circuit is on the bottom and i built these to those drawings that i showed you earlier so you're going to see all of this come together in a few days in part two of this this project can go either of two ways it can stop here at the eight step sequencer or i end up getting thoroughly engrossed with this and i end up building a beat step pro the size of a room out of relays <laughs> I sort of hope that the latter is going to happen because that'll be awesome. But I am about to put this together over on a builder's live stream this evening on Patreon. So if you want to see me putting this together and talking, and I'll also be filming the video at the same time in the same camera. So I'll be doing the live stream and the video at the same time. So if you want to support these videos and the museum and stuff, because um, building relay machines aren't actually that cheap. These relays are about £2.50 each. So if this big beat step pro thing is going to be, you'll need like a thousand relays maybe. So if you want to see this live stream and also contribute to the relay fund then go and check it out over there and if you haven't heard it already there's my new single stupid me out which i'll just play you out for a little bit anyway peace.